Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jesse and in this episode, we're gonna be talking about exporting digital assets for your website projects. In a previous video that I'll link right up here, we talked about the different types of file formats for digital projects like websites and applications. What are they? What's distinct about them? How should you use them and what to be aware of? In this video, we're specifically gonna be talking about the export process for those file types and those assets for your website projects. There's a lot of design software out there, so I won't be able to cover specifically how to do this in every one of those softwares. So what I wanna do instead is focus on the concepts and the basic principles of exporting those assets with some tips and tricks on how to make them smaller file size and look a little bit better. Okay, so let's dive into the computer and we're gonna be using Photoshop and Sketch today to highlight some of those basic principles and the different methods of exporting those assets for websites. Let's jump in now. So you can see in this website project, we have all sorts of different assets on the page. So as we're looking down the page, the first thing is we're obviously gonna to wanna to be making some decisions about what to do here. Remember the two goals. You want things to be looking as good as possible while loading as fast as possible. The first part of your workflow should really be trying as much as possible to understand what can actually be code and what has to be an asset to start with. Um, this button up here, this download button, is a perfect example of simple text with something that could be done in really simple CSS. That does not need to be an asset. And so you would just mark that up for your developers in your notes or in your red lines or whatever you do to just share with them that, hey, that is something I believe you could make in code. Can you please confirm? Similarly, like maybe these buttons down here. But while I'm also looking at the page, I'm seeing, hey, there's this huge like hero image, you know, with these people in the background. That's gonna need to be something and I also have this phone, and what about this kind of like angle cut thing, could we do that in code? And so that's kind of like the, the design decisions that you're making as far as what's gonna be exportable in what way. Now let's talk a little bit about the different ways to export some stuff. And so I can grab an element, like for instance in my layers panel I see this thing is called video one, and this thing is called video two. I'm gonna want those to overlap, and I think that that would be really, really hard to fake as like a JPEG, and I don't want that to be one JPEG, because in my mind, as the designer, I'm imagining some like animation interaction over those when you hover, and as I want the website to be responsive, as it starts to close, I want those things to be separate so I can pop them into separate videos on like the mobile view. So I'm really thinking that I'm gonna have to do a JPEG version maybe for the mobile and a PNG for the regular desktop version. So um, I'm going to export these out as both and what's really great about Sketch is I can choose the layer that I want to work on like video one and I can come down here to my little export panel and I can create my different export settings. Um, so I can export it out at you know one time which we'll talk about more. That's basically at the size it's currently being displayed at as a JPEG and I don't want it to have any sort of like prefix or suffix but I can add another one. So here we go. I also want this to be exported out as one time with no prefix or suffix, but I want it to be a PNG. Now if you're thinking about responsive images for the web, or maybe your developer has told you, hey, I like to have at least three sizes of every image, so I can use something called media queries to really make sure that those images, depending on the device they're using, uh, I can make sure that I serve up the right image at the right size. This is a really simple way to do that, where you can just say, hey, I want you know, a few more PNGs at the so at one, which is the size it's at, at two and at three. You know, so just ask what your developer needs, and and so all I would, I would literally all I would do is press the export button. I'm gonna put these on my desktop. I'm gonna export, and now it's exported all the different versions over here on my desktop, which you can't see because it's out of view. So now I have everything I need right there. I can just dump those into a file. And you know you, you want to make sure that they're named accordingly, um, and so that's why we use those suffixes of like at two x at three x. Uh, but that's a really really easy way to do it. Now I want to kick over to Photoshop and show you a similar way to export things in Photoshop. You can see I have like this surf site thing going on here, and I have this really cool kind of similar video box that's right here. And I want to, I'm just gonna zoom in so we get a good view of this. I really wanna get this video box uh, exported out um, with the graphic, because I'm just gonna make it a straight graphic when they click on it, it opens up some sort of like embedded YouTube video or something like that. Um, so how do I export that? here in Photoshop, well, it brings up a different way of exporting things, which would be you either have to crop that item out, 
save it out as a smart object or the simplest way to do it would be to slice it. So I'm gonna show you the crop and the slice because those are the simpler ways. Take the video and by holding down Alt, you can press the eyeball and that will, that will take away everything else on the canvas besides this file here, okay? And so that's the first thing you, you'd wanna do. Then the next thing you'd wanna do is go up to image and you'd wanna trim and trim all the transparent pixels, okay? See what's happened here is it's trimming all the transparent pixels but I have this interesting drop shadow thing around it. If I wanna keep that drop shadow and actually have that be part of the element, I can do that. Now all I have to do is, with the transparent background showing just like this, you know, you wanna save for web and device. You can do that by either going up to file and you can go to export and you can do save for web legacy like that if you want. Or you can just do a quick export as a PNG. Now we have the options to save as a PNG and this is the same um, the same process in Photoshop as it would be in any other file format like, or any other design software like Sketch. When you're saving things as PNGs, you don't have a lot of options. It's gonna save it just as the format itself. If you save it as a JPEG, you can tweak the size of things. So let's go back real quick to our Photoshop document. Now we have this transparent thing. I want it to be a PNG, I want it to have transparency, but you can see down here, here's my file size, okay? My file size is at 323K. It's kinda big. We'll talk about ways to compress those in a little bit, but just keep in mind, that's a big file to be you know, throwing up on your, on your website. So let's do the simpler way of doing this. If you want to crop, get this image out or export this image out without having to crop and do all that kind of stuff, you can do the slice option, which would be go down under this where the shape is and you just find your slice tool. And now we can just take our little blade and there's even kind of smart guides that kind of click on, but boom, we can just kind of slice around that. And if you go up kind of onto the asset itself and double click, we can name this. So we can call this video one. We've named it and now we can save for web and for device. When we do that, we get our whole save menu again, and now we have the option to save as either a PNG or a JPEG. So let's kind of zoom in here, and here is our element. Now let's say we just want this to be a JPEG. We're gonna say, you know what, that's too heavy for me. I'm gonna go up to JPEG. You can see immediately the file size jumped down to 165K. So this is a much smaller file size. And I'm still saving all of the settings on it out as maximum, okay? But if I take the quality and I just start dragging the slider down, you'll see how much that file gets changed. If I drag it all the way down, it's gonna look really pixelated, real garbage. But if I take it all the way up, how crisp and clear it is and nice. So you wanna to try to take this down as much as possible without affecting the quality. And I think right around there at like 65 would be a decent spot. Just I'm just thinking for this image itself. It looks okay, it's gonna be kinda of small. And we dropped that down all the way to 54 kilobytes. That's really awesome. Really quick tip on some things that I really love and some helpful tips on how to export assets out and get the file size as small as possible is, number one, I like to use a, uh, a, a free and awesome tool called Image Optum. I'm gonna open up Image Optum, it's down here in my dock. You can see when I drag Image Optum up here, it's asking me to drag different elements or different files in. So I'm gonna take my first PNG here that was about, let's look at the file size of it, it's about 331 kilobytes originally. I'm gonna drag that PNG in. I'm gonna let Image Optum do its magic. So Image Optum says that it has taken out 4% savings. It's not as good as optimizing PNGs, but at JPEGs it really, really rocks, which we'll look at right now. I'm gonna take this uh, Video 1 JPEG that was about 398 kilobytes because we saved it out really, really large. And I'm gonna drag that into Image Optum and you can see it saved me about 11%. And, and the cool thing about Image Optum is it just overwrites the file and it losslessly, that's a really hard word to say, losslessly takes away any sort of extra metadata in the file and all sorts of other things to really optimize that file down, okay? Let's talk really quickly about SVGs. If we have anything that we want to be exported out as an SVG, like maybe this logo, would be a really good example. We're gonna take the shape, 
You can see in Sketch I have it saved out as like kind of like a smart shape layer. It's all combined or a combined shape layer. And I want to export that out as a an SVG. You can see there's no size options in SVG. It just tells me, hey, you're gonna you're about to export an SVG. When I export the shape, I just drop it on my desktop, and you can see that it is nine kilobytes, super duper small. And you can see if I was to later on drag this SVG into a project, like a working project, I can I can scale this thing up and down without losing any image quality because it's vector, it's awesome. And so it'll do the same thing on the web and, and you know that because you can take this file, this SVG, you can drag this into a text editor like I'm about to do now and you can see that this SVG is fully built out of code. There's all the different vector points. A quick tip about exporting SVGs for your projects would be to make sure you compress them and since Image Optum is not so great at that, I like to use a little tool called SVG OMG where you can literally go to this domain here which I'll link down in the description and drag your SVG and drop it in there and it will compress it. It's telling me I've now saved 57% and what it's really doing is it's stealing all the excess code and compressing the file to be as small as possible and you can see just by clicking on show original I'm not losing any sort of any sort of like quality of this SVG and if I want it all I have to do is download it and now I have that shape that's been compressed and it's super awesome my developers just gonna like love me so much for that and so you can even click over and see the code and what it's done with the original versus the compressed version. So there you go, there's my quick tips and tricks for exporting your assets for your next website projects. Uh, we've talked about slicing and cropping and using a smarter tool like Sketch to be able to export those assets out. We talked about SVGs and PNGs and compressing things and some fun tools. I hope that this video was helpful, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments and if you're interested in more videos like this about design and development. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. I like to do a lot of stuff just like this video. And so I hope to see you guys in the next one where we talk about exporting assets specifically for your iOS and Android applications. Talk to you guys soon.